So when we're talking about the Persians, we are talking about road building, we're talking about a courier service. Now these things are going to be the foundation of every society after the fact. The Persians are the first to do it, and that's why that's their point. They're the first to build roads, the first to have a courier system. They're also going to be the first to uh, use a kanat system, which is just protecting water from evaporation. Remember, they are in the Middle East. Those are actually still being used today, which is pretty cool. All right, so the canal system is underground canals. Underneath um, mountains and stuff, they carved out territory and they made little canals. So water would stay cool and out of the sun to avoid evaporation. They'd also make canals where they covered it with stone to allow the water to travel without as much evaporation, which is very, very effective. Okay, and like we said, on the royal, royal road system. Now, the Ahmed Empire. Now, if you look over here, the Ahmed, you need to know that Cyrus is the founder and Darius are the most important rulers. They are very tolerant. Because they're tolerant, people are going to expect kindness and respect from their rulers. When you get to Xerxes, who's an incredibly harsh ruler, who is going to try to rep repress the rebellions by force, people are going to uh, uh, rebel openly, and that's going to call the fall, cause the fall of the Ahmed Empire. Okay, um, road building canal system and Xerxes. Xerxes is your big guy. If you've ever watched the movie 300, who here has ever seen the movie 300? Xerxes is the pretty guy with all the pain and stuff. Yes, you know who I'm talking about? That's Xerxes. He's a really, 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 really mean guy who publicly executes hundreds of people at a time just to show his power and, uh, and force. Uh, because of him and his harshness, the people are going to completely open and rebel and that's going to cause the end of the Ahmed Empire, okay? Now, during the Ahmed Empire, it is important to know that they are going to be fighting the Persian Wars. The Persian Wars are going to fall under the Ahmed Empire. If you've ever seen 300, you've seen uh, a couple images from the Persian Wars. The Persians are going to lose at Marathon. Marathon is a city in, uh, in Greece. Um, I am training for a marathon currently. I have my first, not my first ever, but I have my, I have a half coming up here in a couple months. And I'm going to run a marathon in honor of the guy who ran from Marathon Greece to Athens to yell, rejoice, we are victorious, and then kills over and dies. Now, the actual m amount, the gentleman ran from Marathon to Athens is only 24 miles. I'm going to run 26.2 because a guy in England was, a king in England was too lazy and he didn't want to go watch the marathon, so he made it come by his house. That's how we got the extra two miles. Yes. Um, I'm going to run a marathon in, it's going to be in Georgia. Yeah, that's a long drive to watch me run by for five seconds. Extra credit? No. God, no. No. All right, so. You're going to have um, your Persian Empire and your Persian Wars as events against the Greeks. The Greeks are going to win. It's important for you to know that. Eventually, the Persians are going to fight the Romans, and the, Roman, uh, the Persians are going to win. So keep that in mind. Persian Empire, uh, Persian Wars, the Persians are going to win. This is going to allow um, Alexander the Great to kind of uh, come in. Uh, Greeks win, opens the door for Alexander the Great. Now, your next major empire is the Seuclid Empire. Now, the Seuclid Empire is after Alexander the Great. It is after Alexander the Great. It is after Alexander the Great. I cannot stress that enough. Okay? So, the Ahmed Empire is there. Then a guy named Alex comes in, takes over, gets drunk, eats too much, his stomach explodes, and he dies. It's a painful way to die, by the way. Okay? He dies so suddenly, all of his generals are like, ah, crap, what the hell do we do? Okay, because he was only like 32 or 33. He had a long life ahead of him. Um, anyway, what we're really going to talk about when we get to the Greeks, when we get to Alexander the Great, what Alexander does as he conquers a territory, he leaves one of his generals behind. So he's like, Jack, you're going to stay here in room 160. You're going to marry one of the local girls. Here is a bag of cash. Start a household. Start an industry. And build up the economy and build up the civilization. And Jack's like, hell yes. I get to marry a local girl and I get to stay in one place. Hell yeah. So he becomes a local leader. Alex is like, I'm going to be sending you email. I'm sending you emails. Oh my god. Okay, we're not sending you emails. 
That's historically inaccurate. I am going to be writing you letters. Make sure you're following my aim. Okay, so he's getting letters, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do, everything's going great. Alexander the Great dies. Technically, he's like, well, I don't want someone else in charge of me. He's like, well, why don't I just do what I have been doing? And that's exactly how the Euclid Empire starts. Now remember, he is Alexander the Great's general, which means he's Greek, came into Persian lands. Well, he's going to marry a local girl, so now we have a blending of Persian and Greek. Well, guess what his descendants are going to be? A blending of Persian and Greek, by the end, mostly Persian. Persian. Yes. That's why the Euclid Empire is a mix of Persian and Greek. Because the original descendants of it are half Greek because they're the generals of Alexander the Great. Okay? Eventually, the Euclid Empire is going to fall because of an invasion from India, and they're going to fall. Uh, the Parthenians are also going to invade. So, what you need to know about the Euclid Empire is based on Alexander G's empire, uh, because he dies unexpectedly. Uh, attacked by India, falls the Parthians, okay, which is your next major empire. Now, your Parthian empire is going to be a federal government system. So is that centralized or decentralized? Centralized government system. It is going to have an especially strong cavalry. What is a cavalry? If you can raise your hand and tell me what's a cavalry. What do you got, Dean? Like horseback um, horsemen? Yeah, they're horseback riders. They ride horses. Alexander the Great is why he's as successful is because he has a very strong cavalry as well. Uh, the Parthians are known for it. Uh, the Mongols are going to do it better than anyone else. Okay? Um, they're going to be fighting with the Romans, which is going to make them weak. Eventually, they're going to fall. Uh, because of internal rebellion. Okay, that's all you need to know about them. Centralized federal government system, strong cavalry, fight with the Romans, falls to rebellion. That's all you need to know about them. And then finally, you have the Sassanid Empire. And the Sassanid Empire, they claim to be the descendants of the Ahmed Empire. Why would they say they're the descendants of the Ahmed Empire? Why would they say that? Max? Justify their claim to rule. Okay, justify their claim to rule, but what else? What else, Maya? Um, like they were the most powerful, so they want people to think that they're powerful. Absolutely! No one claims to be related to the biggest moron in the history of morons, correct? You only claim to be related to, I'm related to Keanu Reeves. I, my maiden name is Reeves, so people used to say that. I was like, no, I'm not. Bill and Ted was not a great movie, okay? It's a classic, but it's not a great movie. You don't really claim to be descendants of morons, you claim to be descendants of leaders, so that's how they uh, establish their power. Um, they're eventually, they're fighting with the Romans, the Byzantium, um, which who we're going to come across here in a second, in a little bit actually next week, or in three weeks, just kidding. And then uh, the biggest thing you need to know about them is they have an amazing government system. <coughs> their government system is incredibly effective, so much so that the Chinese are going to import Persians to do their government work. That's how effective their governments are going to be. Eventually, the Sassan Empire is going to be overthrown by the Muslim empires, but it's not until period three. Okay, so, biggest things you need to know, believe they were descendants of Ahmeds, fight with Roman and Byzantines, and fall to Arabs, Islam, that's not until period three. So they're going to be around for a while. All right. So, when you talk about Parisian uh, society, they are known for their government structure. They are known, uh, they have steppe traditions, which means it's that area in the middle of Asia. Okay? They also have a lot of slaves. A lot of slaves who are doing, um, who are children. Domestic servitude is typically what they're working on. Now, the economy, you're going to have some good farmland. You're going to have a lot of long-distance trade. Why do we know long-distance trade is important? You can raise your hand and tell me, why do we know long-distance trade is important to the Persians? What did they do? What did they do, Isabella? They built roads. They built roads, yes. Long-distance trade is incredibly important to the Persians. That's where they get most of their wealth. Because of that, they're going to build roads, which will be a foundation of every other society. All right. So our Gnosticism, this is one thing you do need to write down, as you will notice. It is something I have done on my wall. So our nationalism is the religion of the Persian. It is polytheistic, okay? It's pre-Islam, 
a lot of the things that are found in Zoroastrianism will find itself again in um, Islam. Now, stop for two seconds. I will give you plenty of time to write. Stop and listen. Okay? When you come up with a religion, like we're going to see with Christianity, we're in inventing Christianity next week, okay? When you create a religion, you use a lot of religion, a lot of the similarities from the previous religions. So, Christianity is going to be created during the Roman time period. In case you've ever read the Bible, they have a section called the Romans. The Romans killed Jesus. Did you know that? Okay, because some people are like, oh my God, they killed Jesus? Yes, they did. Okay, they crucified him. Okay, what happens is when Christianity was starting, all of Rome was polytheistic. Okay, so what the Christians did is they took polytheistic things that people really liked and used it in their new religion. Did you know Jesus was actually born late October, early November? But the reason why we have Christmas is because it's a major polytheistic holiday for the Romans. So in order for people to adopt Christianity, we made their biggest holiday the same holiday as the polytheistic. Same thing is happening with Islam. Zoroastrianism was the most popular religion before Islam. A lot of the ideas of Zoroastrianism has found itself in Islam. Do we see the importance? It makes it easier for people to adopt a new religion if there's something familiar from the previous generation. It's important that you understand that now. Now, the only things you really need to know for Zoroastrianism is that the Sassanid Empire are its largest devotion. They're the most dedicated to religion. Alex the Great, Alexander the Great is going to burn down all the temples. Why would Alexander the Great burn down all the temples? What is he trying to do? Why? What is he trying to do, Dean? Declare that he is like the supreme ruler, not. No, the... he's not going after a religious thing. He does not believe he's a religious god. Why, uh, Max? Because they look at his gods. Okay, and who's his gods? The Greek gods. Greek gods. Remember, he's there spreading Greek <coughs> culture and Greek ideas. He wants them to worship Greek gods, which is why he burns them all down. Does that make him uh, popular or unpopular? Uh, unpopular, absolutely. Uh, discriminated against by Islam when Islam is rising. They shun Zoroastrianism, and it's polytheistic. Those are the big things you need to know about it. All right. Uh, the Parthians aren't really a big fan of it, okay? And it starts to kind of start dying out, and will eventually die. Um, we start having some other religions show up, and that's all you really need to know about the Persians. To the boards, my darlings, to the boards. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who is the founder of the Ahmed Empire? Who is the founder of the Ahmed Empire? Let's go, transition faster. Like I said, the Greeks are all over this. Read. Cyrus. Cyrus, on your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the ruler who's going to cause a rebellion that is going to cause the fall of the Ahmed Empire? Good. Vanessa. Xerxes, on your whiteboard, please tell me who, uh, what two sides or what two teams are fighting in the Persian War, and tell me, put a star next to the winners. What two, what are the two teams in the Persian Wars? Perfect, throw it away, grab a new one. Good. Holly, what do we got? There you go, on your whiteboard, please tell me, what are my four Persian empires in order? Good, good. Emily, what are they? Boom. On your whiteboard, please tell me the Sassan Empire is based on whose empire? Sassan Empire is based on whose empire? Oh, jeez, people. Who is it, Zach? Alexander the Great. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the official religion of Persia?
Good. Good. Micah, who is it? Yeah, sounds good to me, man. Zoroastrianism. On your whiteboard, please tell me what two empires are going to fall to rebellion. What two Persian empires fall to rebellion? What two empires fall to rebellion? Good. Ms. Patel, who are they? Um, the Parthian and the Akhenaten. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me um, what, uh, what empire is going to be fighting the Romans? What uh, two Persian empires are going to be fighting Romans? What two Persian empires are going to be fighting the Romans? Good, good. Adrian, who are they? Oh, the Parthian and the Sassanid. Very good. On your whiteboard, please tell me um, what is going to increase military control, increase long distance trade, and create a currying system? What invention is going to allow those three things to thrive? Good, good. Holly, what is it? Rhodes. Rhodes, very good. All right, here we go. The Greeks. By the way, isn't this way more interesting than the Mesopotamians, for God's sake? Oh, thank God. All right, here we go. So your Greeks, I'm just telling you now, most of your test is going to be on the Greeks, okay? I'm going to say a little bit more than 50%, probably I would say 60 to 65% are going to be on the Greeks. The Greeks are the foundation of all European society because the Greeks are going to be copied by the Romans, and everyone wants to be Roman, including here in the United States, correct? We use Roman columns on all of our important buildings in Washington, D.C. Everyone wants to be the Romans. The Romans want to be the Greeks. They're the most important. The Persians are cool. They do a couple big things. Not as nearly important as the Greeks. Here we go. So, your Greeks are going to start with the Minoans. Now, the Minoans are going to start on the island of Crete. Okay, I've been there. I went this summer. It was so disappointed. I was so disappointed. All right, have you ever heard of the Greek uh, myth of um, the labyrinth, where you had the minotaur and the labyrinth and stuff like that, and really confusing and all that stuff? It's based on Kosnos Palace, okay? And the minotaur lived there in theory. Now, Kosnos Palace is a big deal because it's the foundation of all European government structure. Okay, where you had a king with all, a representative of all of its kingdom there, so he can directly control the representatives. Does that make sense? Just like when you think of like medieval times, the king would have a court of all of its different lords who would live with the king, and they would tell the king would tell them what to do, and then they'd go back to their land. Okay, that all came from Kosovo's past. It was so disappointing. Don't ever go. Don't. It's all fabricated. It's all a lie. It's terrible. Our tour guide was awful, and I almost got arrested. How? Because in Greece, you're not allowed to tell people about the historical site while you're in the historical site unless you have a government sanctioned ID. Oh, what? Because they're trying to ensure that you don't have, like, have you ever seen a um, million dollar, the Some Indian dollar. movie, Some Dog oh. Millionaire? Have you yeah. ever seen that one where yeah. they're giving tours of, you know, of, oh my god. Taj Mahal, yeah, they're giving the top tour, and it's a completely wrong tour. They're trying to avoid that, which makes sense. Well, I was in there, and our tour guide was terrible. They were showing me some wrong, she said some just flat-out wrong information. And I was so upset, and the kids were like, oh my god, Miss Bennett, are you okay? I'm like, no. This is so important because of this, this, and this. And some lady came up, and she's like, where's your ID badge? I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, and then Ren came to my aid, which only made it worse. She's just talking to her students! And then... Yeah, things escalated, almost got arrested. My sister almost got arrested there too. Really? Yeah, because she went on the trip too and she went to fill up the water bottles in the mountain. Who's your sister? Katie. Katie what? The George. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really terrible. It was awful. It was so bad. I had tears in my eyes. And when I told him to cry, <laughs> I actually cried when we got back to the ship. It was so sad. It was so sad. Anyway, it's a big deal. Don't go. Just live it in your brain because it's not worth it. Okay, so the thing you need to know about the Minoans. They are the first of the Greek societies. They live in Crete. They have the Kosnos as their capital. The Palace of Knossos is their center of power. They are the foundation of Greek language. They're the one who are going to change it. 
And they, um, we assume they fall from invasion. We don't really know why they fell out of power. Okay, we don't really know exactly why, but that's all you need to know. Does that work for you? All right, so they fall. We don't really know why. The Mycenaeans. The Mycenaeans are the most important age. When you think of Greece, you think of the Mycenaeans. Okay, so the Mycenaeans are going to conquer the continental part of Greece. So your Greek peninsula, that is going to be conquered by the Mycenaeans. Um, the Odyssey and the Iliad, did you have to read those several books? No. No, they actually really aren't that bad. They really aren't. They're pretty good. Homer, you know, the Trojan War, you know, Medusa, all of your Greek mythology. Oh, you guys didn't have to read it? Huh? Snakehead lady that, like, made you concrete. Yeah, <laughs> if you saw her. Yeah, if you saw her. If you look directly into her eyes, stuff like that. Um, that's the Odyssey and the Iliad. That's written by the Mycenaeans. Um, the Trojan War, okay, where the Greeks win the Trojan War because they sneak a wooden horse into the city as a gift, and then they jump out of it and then kill all the drunk people. Yeah, I'm kind of highlight hitting the highlights here. Okay, um, the Mycenaeans are eventually going to disappear. Um, we don't really know exactly why, but they are the foundation of Greek culture. When people identify them, it's like, oh my god, Greek, Greek, Greek. They're talking about the Mycenaeans. Okay. Now, under the Mycenaeans, you have um, political turmoil and all that stuff. Eventually, they will kind of fall apart. All right. So, polises are city-states. It is really important. If you've ever been to uh, Greece... Okay? It is incredibly mountainous, okay? which mean, makes it easier or harder to travel. Harder. harder, which means people are much more isolated. So you have city-states, also known as poluses. We have city-states, which are in the peninsula, and we also have city-states uh, that are out along the Mediterranean Sea, where we did a little red dots or whatever color dots you had on your map. Okay? Now, they're independent of one another. Two of the most famous city-states are what? You can tell me. What are the two most famous city-states, Aiden? Athens. Athens and Sparta. Now, the first one is Sparta. If you've ever seen the terrible movie 300, that focuses on Sparta. Now, huh? That was a pretty good movie. Oh, it's so bad. Sparta is a city-state. It is decentralized rule. Greece, is, all of its empires are based on decentralized rule. It is located in the mountains of Greece. And it is completely isolated, which means the culture is really, really intense. It's a war-driven culture. Everything's about war. They take five-year-old boys away from their families and put them into, like, training camps of how to make them warriors. You're also not allowed to get married until the age of 30. In order for you to devote yourself more to Sparta than to your family. Because if you obviously have a bunch of kids and a wife running around, you're not going to be likely to be excited to go off to war. Can we agree? So if you don't have that tie, you're going to be like, yeah, war, Arr, let's go kill people. So that's why they limit your uh, marriage till 30. However, ladies, if you're going to live anywhere, this is where you want to live. Okay? You are considered not equals, but pretty close. Men were seen as the warriors, of course, and that's held in high regard. However, women were seen as the creators of warriors. That a strong woman who can raise strong sons and strong uh, girls to be independent women who can keep a house going and protect the children and all that stuff was seen as incredibly valuable. So ladies, if you're going to live anywhere during this time, Sparta is a great place. Now you're not going to have a lot of creature comforts, but you'll be highly respected in society. Okay? Uh, marriage not allowed. All that's what you need to know. Best place to be a woman, okay? Athens is your next major city-state. Athens, when you think about Greece, you think about Athens. Very few people immediately think of Sparta. Most people think of the White Combs, the Parthenon, uh, the Acropolis, all of that stuff. That's Athens. It's a city-state. It's decentralized. It's also the first democracy, but democracy only means if you're a free man, so women, were treated like slaves, we didn't get to vote, you know. Um, it has a very strong military. Now, is it as military focused as Sparta? No, but it does have a good military. Um, it is sea based. They're the ones out there sailing. If Sparta is landlocked, are they sailors? No. No. 
Athens is going to be your largest importer for the whole peninsula of Greece. They are the ones who are making the most money. Um, however, because of that, you're going to see that there's going to be a huge amount of class conflict. Okay. Please listen for me, to me for two seconds because this is a theme we're going to hit over and over and over again. Okay. Imagine you are a very poor person. Okay? You're a very poor Athenian. Okay? And there is incredibly, incredibly wealthy, and there's no middle class. Would you feel motivated or unmotivated? Unmotivated. unmotivated. If you knew, no matter what you did, you were never going to be wealthy, you were never going to improve your life, would you try? No, absolutely not. Would you make life a lot harder for other people around you out of your frustration? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what people who feel frustrated in their situation make life harder. If you're pissed off at your parents, do you make their life easier or harder? Absolutely. It's the same thing with grown-ups, too, if they're frustrated. Now, the most important thing a society can do is have a strong middle class. Okay, have you listened to Trump or Hillary? All they keep talking about is middle class, middle class, middle class, middle class, right? Hello? You should be watching all this stuff going on, people. It's kind of a big deal. Huh? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so the middle class. The reason why everyone talks about the middle class and the reason why the middle class is historically so important. If you are poor and there's a middle class, what that tells you is if you work hard, you can improve your life. That you can make more money than your parents. Is that motivating? Isn't that what essentially you want to do? You want to do better than your parents did. That means you believe there is a middle class. Okay? That if you work hard, you can get yourself out of. Middle class gives opportunity to the lower level socioeconomic. If there is no middle class, okay, People are incredibly frustrated, and we have a thing called class warfare, where the poor are pushing, breaking laws, destroying, rebelling against the wealthy, and the wealthy are shutting out and rejecting the poor with not having enough assistance programs, not doing enough to stimulate the economy. Okay? We have class warfare. Who do you think loses the most? Actually, the wealthy do. Because eventually the poor, is there more wealthy or poor people? So if there's class warfare, eventually what's going to happen? <laughs> well, a lot of people are going to die. Eventually there's going to be overthrow. So when we have overthrow of rebellion, typically it's either because of a harsh ruler or a cl class warfare. Class warfare is what's going to bring down the Greek Empire. Okay, because there's too big of a gap. That's really important because guess what? Typically, from here on out, what are we going to see is the biggest reason why empire falls? Class warfare. Because there's too much of a gap. Okay? The reason why people saying the American dream is dead is because there's no middle class. The middle class is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Theoretically, I don't really know. Okay? I don't teach A-push. Okay? How, so, people are getting incredibly frustrated. So, if people are getting more and more frustrated with this lack of a middle class, what eventually is going to happen? Over there. I'm not saying tomorrow in 10 years, but that's essentially how things happen. So, in, in Athens, we have a huge class conflict. There's a large wage gap. There's a large money gap between the wealthy and the poor. Eventually, it could cause problems. Now, what we do have in Athens is we do have democracy. Now, democracy is going to start with um, uh, aristocratic salon, which is going to mediate crisis, which means people get together and talk about issues. Uh, paid civil service, you're going to have uh, restrictions. Now, the biggest person you need to know from Greece is Pericles. Now, Pericles is a big deal. Pericles is going to come in, and he is going to usher in the classical age, which means when you think about Greek culture and Greek art, do you think of, like, white columns and incredible art and incredible architecture? Hello? That was essentially laid the foundation by Pericles. He is going to donate money and equate money for our public works projects, for our beautiful art. All of this stuff is going to be paid for essentially by Pericles or started by Pericles. He ushers in the classical Greek age, which is a huge deal because every other civilization is going to try to do the same. Have you ever heard of Augustus? Yeah. Okay, Augustus ma uh, follows Pericles in doing this with the Romans. Okay, he's a very big deal. He's going to encourage cultural development. Under Pericles, you're going to have the dramas. 
you're going to have your philosophers. So if you're an incredible thinker like Aristotle, Plato, um, Socrates, they're going to be paid to create. Okay? That is all based on Pericles and what his thoughts are. Yes? A little bit. I will always tell you what you need to know. I will always tell you what you need to know. Do you have faith in that? There are some days that you just need to know, but the dates of like when people lived and stuff, no. It'll never come down to that specific. All right. Greek colonization. Now, what you need to know about that, it's all over the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. We did a map on it, so I'm going to kind of move forward. Is that okay? Now, why are they doing this? Why are they doing it, Maya? Because they need what? Food, absolutely. Food is the biggest reason. Okay, and here's just a map of that. Okay, the effects of the Greek uh, colonization. So the Greeks are going out and colonizing in order to bring food back to the peninsula. Okay, because of their colonization, they're going to increase trade throughout the entire region. All of a sudden, places that weren't really trading are now going to be trading in a major way. Like Spain, off the coast of Spain and France, we had a couple colonies, correct? Okay, there's really nothing going on in Spain and France right now. There's no organized government system. All of a sudden now, they're going to be trading with one of the world's powers. Okay, is that a good thing or a bad thing for them? Yeah. It's a very good thing. They're making money. They're seeing some organization, stuff like that. Communication of ideas. All of these ports are going to be held by Greeks. If you show up to an area like Spain and uh, France, are you going to bring your Greek ideas? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So the importance of the colonies. I'm writing it down, so does that mean you should? Yes. Of Greek colonies. Increased trade around Med Sea. Spread Greek ideas. Culture. See ya. Pick up tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Bring your spice in tomorrow. We'll look at it. How's that? But you only get access to the party if you did your work. Naturally. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.